good morning all my name is mohan burke from india my research area is microstructure evolution of long nanostructure tubes by accumulative tube bonding expansion extrusion process co-author for this work is dr sanju sharma sir associate professor and head mechanical engineering department amit university professor abdel habib murad sir mechanical engineering department united arab emirates university ue and professor pv sharma sir vc at amit university so this research work is done at jointly amit university and united arab emirates university by me with the help of dr sanju sharma sir uh, research is basically to develop a nanostructure tube nanostructure tube based on the concept of severe plastic deformation so outline for this work is objective of work then what is atp process what is finite element modeling and simulation conclusion and the references which i have used so outline for this research is uh, to develop nanostructure tube particular nano nanostructure tube uh, which will be helpful for many applications like thermal uh, thermal applications then maybe hydro hydraulic applications uh, for heating applications so it will be applic- uh, so there are many applications for the this research area uh, basic aim is to develop nanostructure tube via, via with the help of accumulated tube bonding process on the principle of severe plastic deformation so what is severe plastic deformation i will discuss first so severe plastic deformation is defined as metal forming process in which an ultra large plastic strain is introduced into a bulk metal in order to create ultra fine grained metals or non metals so basically it's a metal metal forming process in which a strain is introduced to form the ultra fine grained metals the main objective is to produce high strength and line weight parts with environmental harmony many processes such as rolling forging and extrusion that is also severe plastic deformation process plastic strain is introduced in this process but which is less than 2 while in this process it is more than 2 so uh, wh- why it is called nanostructure because the grain size is less than 10 nano nanometer we can see the description of grain size if it is less than 10 nanometer it is nanostructure if it is less than 1 micrometer it is ultra fine grain if the grain size is less than less than 1 micrometer uh less than 1 micrometer but greater this uh it is less than 10 okay but greater than 1 it is called fine fine grains okay but if it is greater than 10 micrometer it is coarse grain you can see the grain before deformation and grain size after deformation it is small so if the, the grain size decreases as per the this equation okay so yield strain increases okay so this is sigma y is equal to sigma y o o plus area cross section into d raised to power minus 1 by 2 so advantage of this process is high strain super plastic properties hyperic strain and corrosion resistance these are the advantage of this process there are two approaches of severe plastic deformation bottom up approach and top down approach so bottom up approach is the powder metallurgy alloy deployment while the top down approach is severe plastic deformation method like ecap and atb so we are using top down approach you can see the different application here the chamber you can see uh, the cylinder chamber piston cylinder chamber then this nut bolt assemblies and different parts automotive parts so these are the application of 
severe plastic deformation. So before explaining the complete process, uh, I will just explain certain literature review on this area. So these are the these are the scientists uh, who worked on this process. So Faraji worked on the material Z91 and used the process of tube channel angular facing. Okay. So he has got some values. This is the now hardness value. Okay, you will see you will strain. Okay, these are deformation values. Okay, then uh, Sufi worked on magnesium alloy using T cap process, and this was the hardness value. Okay, and okay, this is the yield strain value 160. Nagasekar worked on titanium, and Faraji worked on brass. Okay, with parallel tube channel angular facing. So these are some literature reviews. So the tool steel, okay, used for dye. Now the literature review different material is used, but this I am explaining for my process. So uh, tube is going to be used for copper, and uh, dye. Dye is will be of S13 tool steel, that is high speed steel. So it is generally alloy tool steel. Carbides and diamonds. Okay, why I am using this is tool steel. These are the properties of tool steel. S13 tool steel is versatile chromium molybdenum hot work steel that is widely used in hot work and cold work cooling applications. The hot hardness of S13 resists thermal fatigue cracking, which occurs as a result of cyclic heating and cooling cycles in hot work cooling application. So these are the uh, some chemical compositions of S13 steel that is chromium, magnesium, silicon, chromium, man, uh, molybdenum, vanadium. This is not chromium, this is carbon. Okay, sorry. So 0.4% of carbon, 0.40 magnesium, silicon, chromium. Okay. Then, then, so before going to uh, how I perform the experiment uh, and numerical analysis, I will explain. What it is step by step. Okay, so these are the process. Okay, basically this is the model which I made using modeling software that is uh, SolidWorks. Here you can see this is a tube, copper tube, and this is a die, blue color die, and this is a chamber, and this is a mandrel. Okay, so tube is used is of one inch. Now you can see here this tube is passed through this die is passing through the die and when it is passed through the die so you can see here the it is this diameter is reduced here here it was diameter was different you can see different color and this color different so this is the first pass okay you can see, explain step by step this is the mandrel okay this is a tube okay original tube this is a washer up to uh, so up to which the tube will be uh, Passed okay to stop the tube, the tube with reduced diameter and thickness. So, this is the dimension of tube with reduced dimension thickness. You can see this uh, this drawing was made in SolidWorks software. So, yeah, so stage two when tube is passed, it is will be long, elongated. So, this is the first stage two. Okay, once it is passed, this was the diameter after passing. Then, uh, in the third stage. Expander, this is expander. Okay, this is a model of expander. See, when it will, it will be passed to the tube. So when it is passed to the tube. It is this uh, size of tube from inside will be more as compared to the first stage. Okay, and then see once it is expanded in the fourth stage, tube will be passed in the first tube. So there was one tube. So it is cut into two pieces. Then first tube is expanded, okay, with the help of expander, okay. After cutting, is expanded. Then this tube was inserted in this tube, okay. So this we can see. After insertion, these are the two tubes. This is the final tube. So this tube thickness uh, will be double, you can say, but diameter will be same as compared to first tube. So this was the modeling uh, of the tube and simulation. 
OD of the tube initial thickness was 2, 2 mm. Okay. P2 is 1 mm. Length of the tube is 400 mm and pore cover. It is passed. You can see the element used is the 1D element. Okay. So you can see the this is the equation 1 minus equation of 1 minus equation is to evaluate its Taylor uh, criteria when loads are applied. Okay. So this is the old mice stress, how it is calculated. Okay. So the these are the uh, pictures from the analysis. You can see here this tube is reduced, okay, diameter is reduced and length is more by passing to this die. Okay, then this is uh, a final stress strain graph. You can see here the value of equivalent stress and total deformation. Okay, this value is you can see here deformation and stress value. Okay, so this is the equivalent plastic strain. Here will be this 81, 81. Uh, this mega pascal. Okay, now these are the results. Okay, perfume result. So one mice stress is in long uniform section of the tube. These are the result. This is a Stress strain. Stress was 300 mega pascal. This value you can see after passing to the die. And this is uh, effective plastic strain in larger section of the tube. This was the plastic strain. It is 0.5 higher. I can say plastic strain stress versus plastic strain graph for different di diameters. Okay. So and this the nominal stress versus nominal strain graph. So annealed copper is this. And add residues received copper. So you can see here add received copper tensile stress is more while the anion copper strength is uh, less. Okay, and it goes on increasing with the nominal strain. So this was the graph of drawing force and feed angle. So feed angle versus drawing force. So feed angle goes on increasing, force goes on decreasing, but at certain point it goes optimum, but after sub point it goes on again increasing so you can see here the one mice stress increased okay earlier this stress is increased so uh, this is the as this is increased the grain size was layer was grain size was decrease your value you can see the grain size value d is 1.25 d is 1.25 so strength will be more so here D is less, strength is less. Similar way here, as value this D goes on decreasing, this strength goes on increasing. So conclusion from our work is high market demand for efficient material in terms of lightweight and enhanced mechanical properties. SPD process in reinforcement on different material like aluminum, magnesium, titanium shows significant enhancement in tensile strain. So this is the novel method of silver plastic deformation on multi-layer tube. That is accumulated to bonding and along with the graphite on equivalent plastic strain, hardness, microstructure refinement, grain size value, and hydrodynamic pressure. So, these are some references uh, okay, for my work. This is Mohebi, okay, accumulated to spring bonding as a novel SPD process. These are some references, okay. That is uh, then Faraji, Mashadi, Abriya, Keen, Deformation, Behavior. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank you to all this conference uh, organize, organizers and all, all the professors. Uh, thank you once again.